in the trenches with Ryan Roxy. I'm, I'm imagining this is by um, the early uh, 80s. And this is, uh, I can tell you exactly where that is. That's that's the summer of 1984. And is this Kerrang is, magazine era? Is this during the Kerrang magazine? Right. That guy on the left in the dark glasses, that's Ray Palmer. He used to, a uh, photographer, he used to specialize in uh, uh, photographing rock chicks. We used to have a page in the magazine called Lady Killers, and it would be readers, <laughs> that, um, uh, women that would dress up, you know, in leather and hair and flesh and makeup. And Ray used to shoot them. Uh, he was a real ladies' man. He's gone now, but he was a real ladies' man. The other guy was a photographer as well, um, but not in any sense a wild man. Uh, and then me in the middle. So what that was, Kerrang! magazine was in Covent Garden, a beautiful part of London, and no mobile phones in 1984. So we were one story up above a tube station, but on our side of the building, when you looked out the window, you looked down and literally across the street was a pub. And that was me and those two guys sitting outside that pub. Because what we would do, if, if we had a moment, you know, we'd go, right, we're, we're, we're going to the pub. We'll stand outside. If anybody rings or something happens, you need us. You just hold the window up and yell. <laughs> um, so that's what we were doing. A lot of day drinking in those days. Um, well, I have to thank you with Kerrang! Magazine and your contribution with Kerrang! Because that was our lifeline to so many bands that we would, would hear about. Because this was before the internet. This was before every single band had an Instagram page or a, 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 a we official website. So if I wanted to know about, you know, at that time, perhaps... Uh, early Motley Crue or or Hanoi Rocks, for instance, yeah. one of my favorite bands out of Finland. And who are these guys? And and how, how can they look so friggin' cool on album covers? Because everybody, I don't care if it was, you know, my band or if it was Guns N' Roses or if it was LA Guns, we all looked at those album covers coming out of the UK and coming out of Europe, especially Hanoi Rocks, I'll be honest with you. And we said, image wise we know they're trying we know they're taking from the stones we know that there's definitely a yeah. passing of the torch but we need to be that we need to look like that and i gotta tell you kerrang magazine was instrumental in showing us that because it was before we could just type a certain name and go on the internet no I, I, absolutely so it, thank that's you. why i say it was like the social media of the age because also there hadn't been a dedicated a magazine dedicated to rock and metal um uh and in the uk there hadn't been a color magazine before and it came out of sounds um uh, because sounds covered all kinds of music tended to do queen acdc thin lizzy whatever then a lot of the other guys would be doing punk Two people would do reggae, but when you rang, you'd go through to an old fashioned switchboard and they'd put the calls through to the office and it might be any phone that the call came through on. And as a gag, and then it turned into a habit, if you got through to me and the rock guys, we'd, or, or, we'd answer the phone like, danang, or karang, <laughs> or badum, you know, or if you rang the punk guys, they'd be, wait, 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 you know, it just, it was a joke. And so when we did this one-off pull-out, colour, that was the that was the thing, colour. That was the catch, um, yeah. What do we call it? Ha, ha, ha. Why don't we? Ha, ha, ha. Hooray. <laughs> I'll call it yeah. that. It's a stupid name. It'll be funny. It's a one-off. It'll People will forget about it the next week. So that's what we did. And, of course, that became the magazine. And, listen, you're right. I mean, I I, I started... 18, 19, and by the time I started writing for Kerrang, I was 25, and I'd been through a lot of that stuff we mentioned. And I, um, uh, I, I just laughed. I would get the new issue and read it and laugh. It was funny as well. And and M Hanoi Rocks, you know, they would come around the office. And I've got to tell you, Michael Munro, it, it would take your breath away when he walked in um, <laughs> the office. I don't mean uh, in in a in a gay way. I, or, I mean gay as well, of course. But just just a beautiful way. He's a beautiful man. Stunning. I mean, it was yeah. like Marilyn Monroe had just walked in the room, or Sophia <laughs> and Brent. You just sort of went, "Oh my god!" You know. Mm. Um, 
but bands did come round. I mean, you know, we had Man of War come round in in their bear skits. You know, uh, <laughs> we had Metallica coming around, and we thought they were just awful. You know, drunken idiots. <laughs> No so much way. so that you ended up writing their autobiography later, yeah. and, well, well, and, yeah. and and being honest about it, to the point, <laughs> to the point where James Hetfield doesn't want to talk to you anymore. But the the person that you actually kind of uh, go off on in the uh, the there Metallica Lars, he's still yeah. your best friend. He's one of your best friends to this day. Correct? He's a smart. He's a smart guy. He's sophisticated. You know, his dad was a, a, a professional, wait, well, probably in the amateur era, but an international tennis player for Denmark. He was in the Davis Cup team. He did Wimbledon, the US Open. You know, Lars had been around the planet half a dozen times before he got to be a teenager. And uh, so he's, you know, he, he, privately educated. You know, it's a whole different world. And, um uh he's not gonna he's not gonna fall out with me over some book but mm. james james bless him and i think maybe a little bit to do with his his uh uh sobriety right. it, it's control for him it's control anything out of his control really really puts him on the back foot and really messes with him and he comes down on it hard and uh, I haven't spoken to him, but my reading is is that he's gone. I didn't have anything to do with this book. This guy has betrayed me, or or you know, he's I, I you know I don't know. But it's not true because I went through Peter Mensch, their manager. I sent the guys Lars and James, all of them, copies of my Led Zeppelin book because I wanted to do it with them. I wanted it to be official. I said, look, this is what I do. Let's do one with you. It'll be amazing. I want, what you've got there, I wanted to do that for Metallica. And they just weren't feeling it. Um, Lars was. I was told Kirk and Lars, yes. James and... Um, was it Rob? Yeah. Would have been Rob by then. Yeah. Rob didn't really have a say, but James, no. And once James said no, that was it. Um, so they knew about the book. But Lars, I mean, there's a, bit, a fair bit in the book where I suggest he can't actually play the drums, you know, or he couldn't in <laughs> those days. And he rang me not long after the book came out. And he goes, hey, it's your favorite drummer. <laughs> <laughs> so he, yeah, he's just funny and cool. But he used to sleep on my couch in my one bedroom apartment when he first used to come to London. And I'd be trying to get rid of him, you know. And then cut to 1989, the, the American Monsters of Rock tour, Van Halen mining, Scorpions and all this. And Metallica, I think, opened the show or second, Kingdom Come opened, then Metallica. And um, it's all back to the hotel by four in the afternoon. And um, drinking, drinking has already begun. Um, and he'd be talking to me and he had these... Nasty European habits, Ryan Roxy. Um, <laughs> what, what would those nasty habits be? Well, it was just a different, part, a different sensibility. He'd go to use the toilet, and I mean sitting down with his trousers around his ankle, that use. Okay. And he'd leave the door wide open so we could still talk. And I'm like, yeah, hey, like a, it's, hey. a, it's a little bit European. It's a, that's a little bit too European. Yeah. <laughs> he, was, he was so sophisticated that he wouldn't shower for like two or three weeks. Well, I, you know what? I, that might just be a rock and roll thing. Because I'm Ryan Roxy, and I've taken all my years of experience of playing guitar, and I want to pass the torch of rock and roll on to you. Check out the System 12 Guitar Method. Yeah. Get that feel guitar, boy, shaking.